Hi, this is Elizabeth from Felted Sky Studio, here with the instructions for our Cherry Blossoms Needle Felting Kit. So if you've purchased the kit, you'll just need to have a few other things ready before you begin. The first and most important one is a foam mat for needle felting. So this is the one that we carry, but you can uh, find one from a different source or maybe you already have one. You just want to make sure it's nice dense foam and thick enough that your needle is not going to poke through it. So have that ready. It would also be good to have a scissors for this project. And if you want to frame your landscape when you're finished making it, try and pick out a frame before you get started. And I'm going to show you why real quick. So this is the one that we carry, and it's sized just right for one of our kits. It's made from reclaimed wood, which is very nice. So actually, I need to go ahead and take out what's in the kit so I can show you this. So let's go ahead and pull out the contents of our kit. And the reason that you would want to pick a frame first if possible, is because you want the backing to fit into the frame that you're going to use. So you can see here, this fits very nicely. If you're um, finding a different frame to use, you'll just want to cut down the backing here so that it fits nicely, and it's best to do that before you start, if possible. So the other things that were in the kit are um, this instruction sheet. So if you're watching the video, that's great, and that's really the best way to learn how to complete the project. Um, but the instructions are still handy for a couple of reasons. First of all, they have a little color chart here, so you could match up the colors, and I do use their actual names when I am talking about them in the instructions. Also, if you want to follow along with the pictures, each step has its own uh, numbered picture, and uh, with the numbers is a little um, time stamp here. So if you need to go back to a certain step or you want to watch something over again, you can see exactly where to scroll to on the video because of those time stamps. So that's also handy. Just a quick word about the needle. It's in this piece of foam board just for protection. So it protects the needle from getting bent or lost, but also these are very sharp and you don't want to leave them just laying around, especially if you have pets or children. It's good to keep the needle in its foam board or sometimes I will also take my mat and just poke the needle right into the side of the mat and store it there but the foam board is included um, just as a handy place to keep the needle as well. This is actually a 38 triangle, if you're wondering. That's the size. A nice general all-purpose needle. Let's see, let me tell you just a little bit more about what these things are. This is our pre-felt. So this is the backing that we're using, kind of like using as our canvas that we're going to felt onto. That's made in Kentucky from Kentucky wool on a really neat machine called a felt loom. Then we have here some roving. So with the roving, the fibers are all kind of lined up the same direction. It's got a bit of a twist to it. This is kind of a thin, um, a thin rope for this roving. So before getting started, you'll probably want to just separate out the colors, kind of match them up with your color chart so you know, you know what you're going to be working with. And then the last thing here is uh, batting. So this is called Harrisville Fleece. Harrisville is the company that makes it. And the batting is nice and fluffy, and the fibers are a little more mixed up, kind of going in all different directions, and it just gives a really nice texture, and it's really also very nice to work with. All right, so that's everything in the kit, and I think we are ready to move into the project. 
Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put in the sky. So we're going to get our blue here, spearmint, and I guess it's more of a blue-green or a robin's egg. We're going to spread it out and this is going to be in the background, the sky. So I'm just going to take it and pull it just very gently between my fingers here. This is called drafting if you're new to working with roving. So we're just, that's going to just kind of flatten it out a little bit and straighten out the fibers. And then I'm just going to lay it down. I'm going to hold here while I pull off the end there. And if it was too spread out, I can kind of take it and push it together so we don't want the backing showing through. So I'm just going to take a few more pieces and do the same thing here. So I'm kind of getting it nice and straight and smooth, and then I'm going to pull off the end there. It's probably three pieces here will do it, and it's fine if some is going off the sides, because we're going to cut that all off later. We have our three pieces, and then I'm going to grab a piece of white roving called water chestnut, and we're going to put just one thin piece of that at the bottom of the sky here. So I'm going to even pull that out just a little bit more, and it's going to overlap our spearmint color like that. So now we're just going to take our needle and start felting, and this is pretty easy. We're just going to start poking, and it's fine if the needle is going down into the mat. That's what that sound is, and in this project, that's just how it is. So we're just going to start poking, and we want to just poke everywhere that we have this wool put down. We want to go over each section the whole thing a few times, and it's going to felt down and become attached to the backing and get a lot smoother and flat. So that's what we're going to do. And now that you've seen that, I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video because that's all we're doing and you can watch as I just flatten out the whole thing and then we will head to our next step. All right, so here we go. Okay, so now we've got this all felted on to our backing, and it's still just got a little bumpiness and texture, but that's fine. 
So now we're ready for the next step. And that is going to be to take our color suede gray here. And we're going to put in the little path. So here on the original picture, this is what we're going to be putting in here. This little gray path goes under the trees. So we're just going to take our gray and we'll take a little part at first and just kind of fold it over on itself. And we're just going to put in some pieces, having the fibers mostly going left to right here, kind of overlapping each other. So we're just going to build our path, and it's thinner at the top, and then wider at the bottom. Like it's going into the distance. And then all that's going to get covered with our grass. The edges are, so this looks fine. So now we're just going to do the same thing and felt all of this down. So we're going right up to the edge of our white here, maybe over it just a little bit. This batting has some white in it and some little brown flecks, and that's fine because it almost looks like light or shadows kind of hitting the path, or maybe just some texture. That's actually a benefit, and we like those showing. Alright, so now we have in our path, and I'm not going to worry too much about the edges because those are going to all get covered up. So now we're going to take our lime green here, and if you see any plant matter, vegetable matter in the, in the batting, you can always pick that out get a little bit of that in there sometimes. So I'm just going to take some pieces of this and lay it so that it's overlapping our path here. And we're going to have kind of a upside down V here. So we get the look of distance. So once we have some in place, we're just going to hold and pull it off, pull the excess away. And then do the same thing here. And then we'll do the other side. And you can <clears throat> take your fingers and kind of work with the wool if you need to, just folding it into the shape you want. And if there are any more bare patches, you can tear off a little bit and fill in. And this looks pretty good. We're going to still be putting, I'll show you on our original picture, we're still going to be putting a few of these other colors in and we can go back to change um, the way this is looking here if we need to. But that's the general that's the general idea. So now we're going to poke this down.
I can see I've missed just a tiny bit at the top, so I'm just going to take another little piece and I might roll it just a little bit and stick it in here just so it looks like our grass color is going all the way to the horizon line here. So it's always possible to add a little more wool on and it's also possible to tear wool off. So like even though we've already poked this down, if I wanted to, I could peel it up and it would indeed come off. So there are very few mistakes that we can't fix in some way. Okay, so there we have it, and again, if there are any places you can look after you've poked all this down, if there are any places where the backing is showing through a little bit, we'll just take another piece of wool and cover it up, making a little bit thicker grass here. I still feel like there's a little spot here needing a bit more. I'm going to go all the way up and overlap the sky just a little bit. Okay, so now we have our basic grass in. And now we're going to add a little bit more of this color into the grass here before we add the trees. So we have just a few wisps of this green, our kiwi green roving. So I'm going to put, and I'm holding and pulling here, so I'm going to hold and pull and get a little wisp of that up here at this horizon line and if it's coming in too far to the to the um, path here I'm just going to poke right on the edge of where I want it to stop and then I'm going to it's hard to even see them on the video but I'm folding the extra little wisps of wool back over so they're not actually getting onto the path We have a little wisp of that back there. Put a little bit of that on the other side, just a pinch. And we'll poke it down as we go. And then I'm going to put just a little bit over here on this side. And again, we don't really want these wisps coming over into our path, so if they, I'm just going to poke where I want them to end and then fold them back over on themselves and poke the ends in. And then I'll give just a little bit to the other side and then we'll be done with this. adding a little more dimension and interest here in our grass. And then we're going to take a little bit of this green. This is also called kiwi in the batting. I'm just going to put a few little tiny pieces and wisps of this in somewhat randomly here. So 
just a few little pieces on this side and you hardly even see some of them. And we'll give maybe one over here on this side. So just poke those down and we can always add a few more in later if we want to. Now I'm going to grab this color called Sea Green and we'll put a little bit of that in here. And poke it down and we're going to add this around where the trees are going in. So I'm going to roll this just a little bit and more deliberately put this in near the top here by our path. So this is where one tree is going to go. And if I didn't quite get the shape I want, I'm going to extend that out just a little bit over here. And again, we can go back later if we want to. I'm going to take another piece for our middle tree here. So these are kind of some little plants or little bush, bush type things here in our picture. And I'm not even going to poke them down quite as much. I'm just going to make sure they're tacked on, but I want them sticking up just a little bit. It's hard to see there, but I'm going to leave them kind of popped up just a bit, not all the way flattened down. And then I'm going to add, this one might be a little low. I'm going to add a third one in for our last tree that's going to be down here. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So we can kind of roll it a little bit. You want to. If you get one that's too big, just tear a little bit off. We're just going to kind of tack this in here. A few more. So we're going to have the three trees here, so that's why we're doing three of these, and that's going to be where we'll place. Place our little trees in. And if you want, you can have some of this jut out into the walkway a little bit. In fact, I think this bottom one could come out a little bit more here. So I'm just adding pieces. So I want to change what I had in originally. So I can get one more in the bottom here. Okay, and I'm going to add just a little bit of this up here on this side too. All right. So now we have that in and after we put in the trees, I might still tinker a little bit with the edges that are coming in here to the to our little path. But right now, I think we are ready to start trees. So for the trees, we're going to get our brown roving here and we're going to start with the ones farthest back here, I'm going to show you on our original piece of artwork so we're putting in these trees here in the back and then we'll work our way to the front so for these trees we're going to get our roving and if you don't have an end like this just pull some out and we want a kind of a thin strand coming out here because we're going to place it here 
about like that. Make sure you can see here. So we want it to start in the sky area and come down into this little grass bush thing. So I'm just going to hold with my fingers, keeping it kind of taut there. And then I'm going to poke right along the roving with the needle. You can go up and down a few times here to get that secured. And I'm going to take my roving still attached and I'm going to hold pinch really here and pull out so that we continue on with our kind of a thin strand. So if you pull it all the way out, that's fine. You'll just tack down. I could even show you here. If you happen to pull it all the way out, you can still go on with what we're doing here. So I'm just poking all the way down into that green spot here. And then I'm going to lay it back over on itself and poke all the way back up. So if you feel like that is thick enough, that could be it, and that would be your tree. If you feel like it's not quite thick enough, we're going to start again at the top, tacking it in here. And again, I'm holding and pulling just to get this nice strand, the thickness that I want of the roving poking it down to where I want it to end, and then I'm folding it back up on itself. And then continuing to poke. So that's pretty good there. And then with, with what I have at the end here, get this separated, I'm going to pull off the piece of roving, and then I'm going to take the ends, and these are going to be our branches. I had one in there and I'm just going to pull it over a little bit so that it starts to look branch-like. And I have another one here. I'm going to make sure it's nice and poked down from where I want the branch to start. And then I'm going to just pull the rest of this little piece of roving over to the side, poke right on it, and that's going to be another branch. So we want a little bit more, a few more branches showing even here in the back. They'll kind of show through the, um, the blooms once we're putting on our, our flowers. So I'm just going to put the roving, the wisp of roving, and start poking it again. And then I'm just going to hold it where I want it to go. And this might be a little too thick, so I'm just going to pinch and pull the rest off, and that's going to really thin it out there. So I'm going to poke right up to where I want the branch to start branching off of our main trunk here. And then I just poke all along that little wisp of roving until it makes a branch. So we'll probably put one more on here going off this way. So I'm holding the end here and I'm going to poke that right down onto my trunk and then decide where I want it to head off here. And then to thin it out again, I'm pinching and I'm going to just pull the rest of the roving off. And there we have another branch. And you can vary it a little. You can put some little little bends in the branches. So there we have our first tree. So now I'm going to go ahead and put in the other tree that's back in the distance here. And I'm going to pull out so I have this little wisp here. I don't want it to be too thin, so it's kind of takes a little practice to get the hang of that, but hopefully that's working for you. So I'm going to hold again and 
poke down the roving. So I'm going to get it down to where I want the trunk to be. And if you want a bit of a little bit of, um, of roots here at the bottom, you're just going to poke out to the side a little bit, one side or the other, or you could do both if you wanted to. So once I've poked that side a little bit, I could come fold back on itself and poke a little bit on the other side. And then I'm just going to take the roving back to the center, and I'm going to hold here and pull again. So my piece was getting a little too thick for this tree. So now you can see I've got a little hint of some roots there at the bottom. I've poked on that roving again, and then there's not much left. I have very thin wisp here, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that off, and this can still be a branch. I'm going to just overlap those branches there. And then, of course, I'm going to need to go back and put in more branches. So, this is kind of a really long thin wisp here. I think I'm going to try and tear that off and just start again with this piece. I'm going to poke that in. We're going to put in a few more branches. So again, I'm pinching and pulling and I'm going to try and get thin but not too thin. Hopefully you're getting the hang of that. And again, you can kind of make it either straight branches or a little more interesting with some curves in there. So don't worry about the edges, anything that's going off the edges, it's just going to get cut off later. And if you have some branches that are looking like they're not all the way tacked down, you can always go back and poke over them some more. Let's put a few more branches on this tree. So again, I'm going to poke right down onto the trunk. I'm going to poke up to about the midpoint on this one and then decide if I want him to curve one way or another. And then again, hold and pull. Pull off the excess. Got another one going here. to go over any branches, you can always add another little wisp of roving right in the same spot. If any of them ended up too thin, you can always thicken them up by adding a little more roving. So I think I'll just put on one more branch here. Getting it started. And then we'll pull it over this way. So you can put on as many or as few as you want. And some of these are going to get almost all the way covered up anyway when we start putting on our blossoms. So here's what we have. Those were our two in the distance. Now we're going to grab our pink batting, it's the one called Water Lily, and I'm just going to pull off 
a little bit and put it right on over our branches that we just did. A little bit on both sides and something like that. And it doesn't have to be exact and as you saw, it's not very hard. We're just gonna put a little batting over that and poke it down. So this is nice blossoms for these trees. If you want more sky poking through, some of this is going to get covered up by the trees we're putting in front, but you can take your needle and, and just pull apart the batting if you want a few places where you see a little more sky. So we're going to poke that down, and it doesn't have to be super flat. We're going to leave some texture in it. And now we're ready for our next trees. So we're going to make these a little bit wider and then the ones in the front will be wider still for the trunks. So I'm still going to be pulling out my roving, just not quite as thin. I'm going to put that in here, starting with the tip of the roving the top and working down into our little green foliage here, our little bushes, grasses, whatever they are. So again, if you want a little bit of roots, you can take the roving and poke out just a little bit. And then we're going to take and pinch and thin it out here. and get it going how we want here. So once I'm at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put that branch. That was just a tiny little wisp there. I'm going to make this branch go To the left here in this direction. I'm go over that a few times, make sure it's nice and tacked down. And then we'll need to put a few more branches on this one. So since I already have a little bit of a branch started here, I'm going to go over that one again by adding some more roving. I'm just going to overlap the trees that we just did. And that one still looks a little bit thin. So I'm even going to go over it a third time here. You can always go over anything you need to more than once. And if the sky is not looking flattened out enough where you're working, like I'm seeing here, I could flatten this out a little bit more. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll add another branch, maybe one coming off of this one. So if you've ever drawn trees and you have other ideas about branch placement, that's totally fine. I'm just adding them wherever it strikes me to add them. And perhaps I'll put one in here. This is somewhat 
random and it's still gonna look really good wherever you place your branches. I'm pretty happy with that tree. Now we can move to the other side. And if your wisp seems a little bit narrow, I'm just going to pull that one off and start again here. I'm going to keep it a little wider for the second tree. So I'm starting at the top again. And as you're poking, you can even take your needle at an angle a little bit sometimes and move the wool either out or in, depending on what you need, if your trunk is not cooperating. So I think I'll take this one and bend it to the left, but I could have gone right doesn't really matter. We're going to come back in and fill in branches however we go. And again, if my sky looks like it needs a little extra flattening out here, I can do that. more branches on this one. Definitely need a few more going in the other direction. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm going to leave that as it is now and go ahead and put on a little more of our pink blooms here. So I'm just going to kind of decide where I think they should go on this tree and then the one on the other side also. I'm just taking these little tufts of pink here and putting them on and then take the needle and poke them down again I'm not getting them super flat I want to keep some texture some airiness And let some of those branches still show through. So again, I could even take my needle and make a point of pulling some of this batting back out of the way of some branches in sky here. That's where we are now. And 
And you can always go back also. I feel like maybe there should have been a little bit more of a bloom here. A little bit lower. So I can always go back and a little in. So now we're ready to work on our last set of trees. So these will be even thicker trunks than the last ones. So I'm not going to pull out quite as much to make it as thin. I'm going to leave it the roving piece a little thicker to begin with. We can always go over it more than once if we need to. We don't get the thickness quite right the first go around here. Okay, so I've tacked it down to my bottom here. And if I want a little root again, I'm going to just poke out to the side a bit. Then we're going to cool a little bit and fold it back over. Take my needle and settle with the bottom a little if I want a bit of a root popping out. Wherever you poke it down, that's the shape it's going to take. I'm going to leave a nice thicker branch coming out this way this time. So this is the edge here. It's hard to see, but that's the edge of the backing. So anything beyond that is going to be cut off. Okay, so where this bit of a branch has started. I'm going to get that going and then we'll go over that. Some of this is at your discretion what you want to do with your branches. That one ended up rather thin, so I'm going to go back over it. pretty quickly for the sake of video here, but you can be taking your time as much as you need to, and you can also go back and revisit any parts that you need to see again. There we have that tree, and we're ready for the other side. and put a little bit of a root here. So I'm going to poke to the side. I 
also pull, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing with my needle here, but a little bit. I can pull the wool down if I need to when I flip it over to kind of fill in there. go up with this trunk and then again I'm going to leave a little bit thicker of a branch and we will pull that out to this side So we're ready to do this tree. It's a few more branches here. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how those are looking at this point. So now we're ready to put our flowers on these that we've just done. So I'm going to pull some wisps out here again. And poke them down. where the blooms would be, layering them in there. We can add a little bit more at the top as well if we want to cover up parts of the branches we just did. Just going to keep putting in a little more here. And again, if you want some branches poking through just need to take the needle and pull apart the batting. Okay, so now we have something like that. You can always go back and add more if you feel like you need more. Let me show you on our original here. <clears throat> this is hard to see, but we also have some of this slightly lighter, more ballet slipper pink. I like to think of it as. So that is this pink lemonade roving. We're just going to put a little bit of that over the top. So I'm going to just pull off a little bit and roll it just a bit and then you know, take it and pull it out. And I'm just going to lay it down and put this on just over a few areas. This is going to add just a little bit more of a blush pink color and I kind of like that for our cherry blossoms here. So we're just taking small little wispy bits of that and kind of tangling it up and deciding where we might want a little bit of that to go. And you see I'm just poking it a little bit leaving the texture. I'm not doing a whole lot of poking on it. 
I think we'll put in a few more of those. And you can make them sort of symmetrical if you want. Like I have three on this side now. One, two, three. So on the other side, I might have something sort of similar. I don't want it to be exact. So we're just adding that in. A little lighter pink highlight here. So I'm pretty happy with that. I might put one more here towards the middle. Just kind of go until you like how it's looking. Alright, so I'm feeling pretty good about our trees at this point. So we're going to go back and do a little more with the edges here of our little path. We're also going to put a little bit of pink on the ground, like the blooms have fallen down to the ground. So I'm going to get a little, just small pieces of our water lily pink and I have one here so I'm going to tuck this one in right by the foot of this tree right up to my other little green bushy thing here so a little bit there I'm going to find some more here and we're going to put just a little bit in our in the actual path itself and we're just taking a little bit of pink here and putting it in the path like the blooms have fallen onto the path and we could add a little more back in the distance as well if you want to and kind of just poking it, tucking it around the green and out of the path here And then go we'll add just a little bit again. And if you want to find the brighter little bits of pink within this batting, that is a nice highlight here. And add just a little bit over here in that patch of green. So I like that. blooms there. So I'm going to go back and add just a little bit of this grass coming out into our walkway here. So if you can see, I'm just taking it with my fingers and the needle and kind of just placing it where I want it to go. And if we want a little bit more of this kiwi batting here, as a bit of a highlight somewhere. We can just add that right in. And on the other side as well, I might decide to add just a little bit more of that. A few spots on the other side. And this one, you can see, and I didn't get the grass in quite as far as on our original, but all of these pictures turn out a little bit different. And there's not one that's the same. And that's fine, so long as we are happy with the result. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. And show you our original here. You can see the path looks a little bit different. The shape of the trees always turns out slightly different, but I'm pretty happy. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do is pull our picture up from the mat so it gets fairly stuck on there. 
So just give it a good tug and pull it up part by part here. Okay, now that we have it off, we go ahead and trim it. So just take your sharp scissors and try and get it to where you can see here. Just literally going to cut off the excess all around the edges of the backing. And then we'll put it back on our mat for a minute here and just take a look at it. Sometimes when you pull it up, it seems like there are little spots where the wool gets a little disturbed and you might need to go back once you've trimmed just to poke any places that seem like they're not entirely secured. And it shouldn't need a whole lot of this, but if you see little spots where you know, the branches need to be tacked down or you want to flatten out the areas of the sky here, you just go back with your needle and poke any spots that need a little bit of work. And now we're ready to show you the frame and how it will look if you do have a frame to put it in and sometimes we need to retrim if it's not quite fitting in the frame. We'll see if we can make this work here. I'm just going to press it in there with our back here and flip it over and here it is. It turned out pretty nicely and hopefully you are happy with the way your landscape turned out. I also hope you had a lot of fun making this project. And if you want to see our other kits and supplies that you could use to make more needle felted artwork, you can visit us at feltedsky.com or at feltedsky on Etsy. So as always, happy felting!